Good morning. I would like to finish considering that example that we discussed in the previous lesson. We consider a Markov process, uh, a time homogeneous Markov process in a phase space such that consists of finite number of points. See, so that such a process uh, that uh, its transition probability probabilities form a matrix consisting of uh, transition probabilities P, T, X, Y that is uh, transition homogeneous transition probability in, into a single point subset of X. So this uh, PTXY are the entries of this matrix. X is the number of row and Y is the number of column. Then the, Chap the Kolmogorov Chapman equation means that P S plus T equals the product of P S P T. And this is fulfilled for all S positive and T positive. for exponential function okay and uh, you should prove that p of t is nothing else but e to the power t a where a is the following is equal to the following limit p of t minus i over t oh i'm sorry i forgot to say that we additionally assume that the following that the following property that uh, this family of matrices has the following property. V, P of T goes to identity matrix as T goes to zero. This is an additional assumption about our family of matrices and under these two conditions imply uh, this representation for that family where A is this limit. How to prove this assertion? Let us consider 
the set of all real valued functions. on our face space. This is a vector space we, we can consider the sum of elements of this space okay. and product an element and a number, a real number. Okay, and let us introduce the following norm in, in, in this space. Norm F is max, maximum absolute value of F of X over all maximum is taken over all X from X. And for a matrix C, if C is a matrix, C, X, Y, X from X and Y from X. Then the norm of C. Let us define the norm for a matrix C by the following equality. This is maximum over all x from x capital. This sum over all y absolute value of C, X, Y. Then these two norms are consistent in, in the following. If you consider C, F, this is a vector for, for, for a given F and its norm is less than norm C times norm F. Okay? And now consider the set of all F from our space B such that limit as t goes to zero p t f minus f over t exists exists okay and it is evident that D is a linear subset of B. Okay. And let us observe that D is dense in B. Dense in, in the sense of our norm. Fix a number H and consider the following element F H that is integral from zero to H P of S F D S for fixed H and F. how to understand this integral. You see, 
these properties, this equation and this property implies imply that the function Ps of f is continuous as a function of s. And this is a very simple exception. You can easily verify that it is true. So this is a Riemann, Riemannian integral, OK? This is a continuous function, better valued function. What? And you, we can integrate, integrate, integrate this continuous function. And it, and we have some element. And now it is not difficult to verify that for any H and any F, we have that this element is such that this derivative exists. Why? Because P S P T F H is we, we can P T write down under the sign of this integral and then we use that equality and we have that this is integral from t to t plus h p s f ds okay and now We see that P T of F H minus F H over T is we have here integral T T plus H. So we have to subtract from this integral the integral from 0 to h. From 0 to h, from this integral, we subtract integral over this interval. Sorry. Okay. Verify. I want to verify. So to calculate uh, p of t uh, f h, uh, we use the group property. Yes. And uh, then change the variable for the integral. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And now we have that uh, this is equal 1 over t integral from t to t plus h <coughs> excuse me from h I'm sorry from h to t plus h p s f d s minus integral from Zero to t, p, s, d, s. P, s, f. Sorry. Isn't the first integral supposed to be from t to t plus h? 
this I, I have a subtract integral of this function over this integral from t to t plus h and I subtract the, the same integral over the integral over the interval from 0 to h okay so we have the, and this function is continuous so this uh, as t goes to 0 this expression converges to ph of f minus f because uh, we have a continuous function. So it is true that f h belongs to d is an element from d. Okay, so and, and now we should observe that FH FH over H goes to zero if h goes to zero. So for any element of b, I can construct such a one that is close to this element. It means that d is dense in the space d, and because b is a finite finite dimensional space, it means that D coincides with B. For any B, we can differenti differentiate this function. For, for any F from B, we can differentiate. That function is differentiable. And this implies that there exists this derivative. And you can easily verify that the elements of the, the entries of the matrix A are the limit as t goes to zero p t x y minus delta x y over t where delta is Kronecker's symbol symbol this this is an entry of this matrix. Okay, so we see that A of x, y is non negative if x is other than y. Okay, and the sum A of x, y over O y from x is equal to zero. So our result is sounds uh, as follows. If we have a family of stochastic matrices such that these conditions is satisfied and this one condition. Then this family is can be represented in, in this way in, in this basic formula where A 
in such a matrix that uh, non-diagonal uh, entries of this matrix are non-negative, are non-negative, and the sum of entries in every row is equal to zero. Okay, the formula P of T is e to the T, A follows from from uniqueness of solution to differential equation? No. No, re recalculate P of T. No, recalculate it derivative oh, at zero. Yes, yes, yes. You are right. You are right. I, I should write down the, the following consequence of these properties. They, they exist the derivative for any t, not only for t being equal to zero, but for any t, and this uh, and uh, this derivative can be calculated as a p of t and P of T A. It is an easy exercise. Okay. So so we, 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 we see that this function satisfies this equation and because the solution to that equation is unique, we can write down that only with any family of stochastic matrices satisfying this additional condition can be represented in this as this formula with a matrix A, X, Y, uh, a matrix A, the, the matrix A that is why, uh, having, possessing these properties. Okay, and now let us think about the inverse assertion. Suppose that we have some matrix with these properties and we can form a family of matrix And the question arises whether this family is a family of stochastic matrices. It means that the sum over all rows, the sum <coughs> of entries over any row, row is equal to 1, and the elements, the entries of this matrix are non-negative. The fact that the sum equals 1 Very, uh, can, can be very easy to verify. Uh, let us consider the following function f0 of x that is identically equal to 1. It 
the reason that a f zero is a vector that is equal identical to zero, okay? Because this and therefore e to the power t a f zero equals f zero plus t a f zero plus t square a square f zero over two plus and so on and all these and all these items are equal to zero okay and so we have that the sum over all rule the sum of entries of this matrix over any row is equal, is, is equal to one and it remains to verify that all the entries of this matrix are non-negative okay and i would like to prove this assertion The following proof will be very instructive for us because it is based on the so called maximum principle. <clears throat> So I have a matrix A of this type, okay, and I would like to prove that all the entries of this matrix are non-negative. <coughs> First, observe that A has the following property. Observation. If F of X of zero is equal to minimum over all x, f of x, then a f at the, at the point x zero is non-negative. It remains the property of the second derivative in calculus. Yes? If you have some function and it attains its minimum at some point, then the second derivative, derivative of this uh, function at that point is non negative. This observation is very simple because a f of x zero equals f of x zero a x zero x zero plus sum over all y from x that are other than x zero, a x y f of y, and x zero is the point 
where our function attains its minimum. So these values are not greater than f of x zero. And these numbers are non-negative. So we have that this is not less than the sum over f of x0, the sum over, uh, over uh, y, a x0 y, and this sum equals 0. Okay, and now <coughs> and now fix some f from our space B such that f of x is non-negative for all x from x. And consider and put u t f the vector e to the power t a f. And UTF is a solution to the following equation. DU TF DT equals A U T F. This is a vector, yes? its coordinates this is the x Should show that UTF uh, UTF X is non negative if F is non negative. Okay. And this function satisfies. Besides this equation, the initial condition. This is the Cauchy problem. The Cauchy problem. This is its solution. Okay. Why do you write zero plus? In the limit limit of U T as T goes to zero. U okay. U No, I mean that if you substitute T is zero into that equation. Yes. Uh, if we do not know that UTF can be written as this, we should consider the following Cauchy problem, okay? And this is an initial condition for our equation. So 
Okay. And now that is positive and consider the function v epsilon of t f that is equal to u t f plus epsilon t f zero f zero i would like to remind is a function that is identically equal to one Its derivative d v epsilon d t <coughs> oh, maybe, maybe let us subtract a v epsilon. This U is the solution to this equation. So uh, we have here A F zero and it is equal to the derivative over T is equal to epsilon F zero. So at any point, any coordinates of this vector is strictly positive. Okay? I'm sorry? Uh, should we write A to B? Or because I don't see how. A of U, not A of A U, right? Because then A of V epsilon. Minus and this operator d d t minus a or this function equals to zero okay and uh, this operator on f zero equals zero okay so it remains only the derivative uh, of this item with respect to t No. You understand? Yeah. I I should apply this operator d d t minus a to this function it is zero and to this sum because this this is a linear operator and d d t d over d t of this uh, expression is this one and a a f zero equals zero because f zero consists of all one of all ones okay and the sum over the row in this matrix is equal to zero okay so we see that any coordinate of this vector is positive on the other hand Consider the minimum. Suppose, suppose that 
for some t minimum over all x of x v epsilon of t f of x minimum is negative strictly negative Yes, yes. T, T, thank you. T is, this is a continuous function, so it's minimum. There is a finite number of uh, continuous function, and some, that minimum is, we suppose that it is, negative and it that minimum is attained at some point at some point t0 x0 maybe not one and that t0 must be from the a point from this interval because for for because if t equals zero that uh, our function coincides with u u zero f and this is a vector with non negative non-negative uh, coordinates, okay? So, T0 must be from this interval. And X0 some point from X. Okay. So, there are two cases. If T0 is less than T, T0 is the inner point of this interval, then the derivative is derivative. The derivative of this function at this point equals zero. Yes? And the second case is if T0 equals T then we have minim, minimum uh, uh, minimum here so this derivative is non positive yes maybe zero maybe uh, some negative value okay and A U V epsilon let us write down this way T zero X zero. I know that this vector takes the coordinates of this vector. attain the minimum of this function over x at this point. So we saw that this must be non-negative. And from these two inequalities, 
P C Z D E Epsilon D T minus A V Epsilon at the point T zero X zero must be non positive and this contradicts with this equality yes at any x this expression must be strictly positive epsilon and here if that maximum is strictly negative we conclude that uh, this expression must be non positive non negative non positive okay can you please recap uh, why this derivative is uh, less than or equal to zero uh, d v epsilon this mm -hmm. if t zero is an inner point mm -hmm. Then we have here minimum. At the point of minimum, the first derivative vanishes. It, uh, it is equal to zero, okay? But there is another possibility. That point T0 may, may be equal to T. So this is minimum therefore this function is decreasing at that point and therefore derivative its derivative is negative yes, it is. <coughs> so this supposition was incorrect and we have that v epsilon of V epsilon of T F is non negative at, at the point X is non negative for all X from X. Uh, and this means that U epsilon of U of t f uh, is not less than epsilon t f zero and epsilon is an arbitrary uh, positive number minus minus sorry, uh, 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 sorry. minus yes And epsilon is an arbitrary positive number, so we have that UCF must be non-negative. Each coordinate of that vector must be, must be non-negative. Maybe it is time to break it. Let us continue our considerations. So we have thus recording proved, in progress. We have thus proved that any homogeneous Marco process a homogeneous. Marco process with the 
this out. Maybe this is not property. To be stochastically, stochastically, stochastically continue. Can we describe? Corresponds to a matrix uh, Markov process in infinite phase space, infinite phase space, phase space. Okay, corresponds to a matrix A consisting of entries A, X, Y, X, Y, such that A, X, Y is non negative if x is other than y and the sum over o y a x y equals zero. So this is a description of any homogeneous Markov process in finite free space is that additional assumption so, sorry. Uh, this, uh, 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 moment uh, 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 any such process can be given by this matrix you have one to one correspondence okay uh, two Remarks should be done here. The first one, maybe it would be more precisely say that not a homogeneous Markov process, but any any solution, any solution. to Kolmogorov-Chapman equation. Kolmogorov-Chapman equation. Because we, uh, described, uh, we have uh, already described all the solution of Kolmogorov-Chapman equation in homogeneous case, this equation, and additional assumption was P of T goes, uh, converges to identity matrix if T as T goes to zero. This is stochastical continuity. Okay. Yes, yes. Why? Uh, because you see, what does it mean that P, T, X, Y, if T goes to zero, goes to zero if X is other than Y. Therefore, 
the sum over all y that are other than x0 goes to 0 as t goes to 0. Okay? So, what, what does it mean? It means that at, at the, our process starting x0 <coughs> uh, our process starting from a point x at the time t will be at any point other than x if t is small this probability is small in some sense this is Continuity, stochastically continuity. Maybe we will speak about this. So each, you see, we, we, in fact, we describe all the solution to Kolmogorov-Chapman equation if the phase space is finite and the process is stochastically. Continuous. We have described any solution. Uh, and now I would like to consider one more example. that we consider a Markov process in some linear space. In a linear space, maybe it would be better if we, will, if we sp speak about the D-dimensional Euclidean space for D with the sigma algebra of Borel, Borel measurable subsets of RD and we call the transition probability in this space, we call it space homogeneous. If the following property, if this function possesses the following property. P S X T gamma plus X. This function does not depend depend on X. What does it mean if we fix two 
instance of time s and t and a point x and some set gamma. So if you translate this set on x, gamma plus x, then the probability, uh, the conditional probability that our proof is starting from x at the time s will be at this set at the time t. This probability is the same for any x, for any x in our space. So we, if this property is our function has possesses this property, then we call this uh, transition probability space homogeneous one. The space homogeneous one. Okay? So we can write down this it does not depend on x, so this is a family of measures. S is less than t, and gamma is a measurable uh, 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 an arbitrary borrow measurable subset of Rd. And in this case, the Kolmogorov Chapman equation can be written as follows. I would like to recall P S X T gamma t equals integral over x p tau y t gamma p s x tau dy or each instance of time s tau and t Okay, and now uh, taking into account this property, I can write down. I can write down this equality as follows: p. Let us put x be equal to zero, so we have mu s t of gamma equals integral if x equals zero so this is mu s tau dy okay and this function let us add to this vector, the vector minus y, and here minus y. So we have that this is mu tau t of gamma minus y. Okay, what does it mean? This operation has special name. This operation is called convolution.
convolution of two measures. If I have lambda and nu, two measures on B, then lambda, it, this operation is denoted by this sign, nu um, is equal integral over RV lambda hamma minus y nu dy and this is the same as the integral nu of hamma minus y lambda dy so you see our the color of Chapman equation reduced in this case to the convolution of two measures mu tau t mu s tau I would like to show that this proof is, is the corresponding proof is is nothing else but the process with independent increments. <coughs> Let us consider the conditional probability that the increment of our process is a point, a vector from the set hama, here s is less than t, conditional uh, probability given the history up to the instant of time s x the proof is x is adapted to this history so x of s is ms measurable so when we calculate this probability we should put x of s as a constant. So the uh, averaging is on only of this random vector. Okay? So I, I can write down this as follows. x of t belongs to gamma plus x of s given ms. But I know that x of t belongs to some lambda over an s. Uh, not over, uh, given, given an S, can be written as P transition probability, P S X of S T lambda. Almost sure. We are almost sure. No, this is the same. <coughs> So I can write down this as follows P S X of S T gamma plus X of S X of T uh, S X of T X of T is a point from gamma. You see, lambda 
T lambda ta. Lambda. This is my lambda. Lambda T lambda. S X of S T lambda. Okay, but this does not depend on this. So we have this. This is nothing else but no S T of gamma. Almost surely. Okay. And what does it mean? This is a non-random number. Yes, this is a non non-random. You see <coughs> you see that conditional probability of this event coincides with the unconditional because I, I can take expectation. This is unconditional probability for this event. Okay? And it means that this event does not depend on any event of from this sigma algebra. This means that our process is has independent increments. Okay, and if you suppose that no S T of B epsilon or zero goes to let us write down here C B epsilon of B epsilon B R of X is the ball in R D Radius R. Okay, so if this measure C is a complement to this ball, okay, so if this goes to zero as T minus S goes to zero. S and T from some interval. <clears throat> okay. It means that our process, in some sense, <coughs> is continuous, stochastically continuous. The our process with small probability can leave the ball from which it started. And we assume this, right? Yes. If if this if addition this property. So we have that no S T must be infinitely divisible distribution. And there is a, a great theory, theory of uh, uh, infinite di divisible, infinitely divisible distribution, formula, Levy-Hinchin, Levy-Hinchin formula, and so on. So th this example was Uh, show, shown for, for 
you that we that we can understand that the theory of processes with independent increments is a part particular case of a Markov process. Uh, a, a process with independent increments is a Markov process. Okay. Now, I would like to consider diffusion processes in the sense of Kolmogorov. You see, all my, all my con consideration was concerned only with transition probability, only with Kolmogorov-Chapman equation. And uh, we only sometimes write down some process. I, uh, somewhat later, I speak about, I will speak about the process, how to construct some process if we have uh, some solutions to Kolmogorov-Chapman equation. Okay, now we will consider this is virtually a stranger. It's from Nikolaevsky. In Kolmogorov, Kolmogorov sense, oh, thank you. Thank you. consider the processes in Euclidean space with sigma algebra consisting of all Borel measurable subsets of RD and Suppose that we have here transition probability density, uh, tra transition probability, uh, this is a function of these arguments, x is a vector from S and T are two instants of time, S is less than T, and gamma is a, a set from this sigma algebra, and this transition probability satisfies the Kolmogorov Chapman equation PSX tau dy.
You see, this equation contains all the Markov processes in RD. It would be very nice to describe all the solution to this equation. But we have already saw that some Markov chains, Markov processes in uh, finite space uh, are the solutions to this equation. You know. The process with independent increments uh, are the solutions to this equation. How to describe the, all the processes uh, in RD? This problem is very big, very large, and because this equation is nonlinear, uh, and Kolmogorov at the beginning of nineteen of the nineteen thirties proposed some method for li linearization of this equation and pointed single singled out some class of processes that somewhat later became called diffusion processes. He supposed that the following that how to linearize this equation you should make some assumption about the about the behavior of our process on small uh, interval of time. So, on the whole, assumed that P, that the, the solution to that equation satisfies some additional condition, the first one, for all S X and all epsilon, the following relation is fulfilled. One over delta S integral B epsilon of X C. C is a complement to this ball. P S X S plus delta S U I goes to zero as delta S goes to zero. This is some assumption of continui continuity of the process. Okay? You, you see, if you start from the point X at time S, the probability that during, during some small interval of time uh, our process will be as the complement to, the, to, to, to a ball for any, for all epsilon. Uh, this probability is not only small, but being divided by delta S is small. Okay. The second, for all S, X, and some epsilon 
there exists the limit. Integral b epsilon of x y minus x p s x s plus delta s dy exists. What does it mean? Y minus X is a displacement of our process during the time from S to S plus delta S. And we, uh, we average this displacement with respect to this uh, distribution. And this limit must exist. And this integral is uh, over uh, the ball, not the component. Yes, over the ball. And the third condition for all S X. And sum epsilon the limit limit as delta s goes to zero integral d epsilon of x y minus x theta square p s x s plus delta s dy exists Uh, for any theta from Rd so we have here the projection of displacement on some vector theta from Rd square of this projection Oh, 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 excuse me. I, I, I am sorry. I, I forgot to divide by delta s here and here. I'm sorry. So, you see, this is uh, uh, this condition is like the requirement of existing a velocity of our uh, process and this one is more complicated i will uh, oh my time is over okay then uh, we will continue next time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped.